It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Dolphins and the Colts coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and CD, our matchup here in this one, as so many do, revolves around the quarterback position. We've got an interesting pairing here. Tua Tonga Vailoa of the Dolphins, Carson Wentz of the Colts. And I think for me, and this isn't an original thought by any stretch, and probably for these two head coaches as well, the key for them is going to be limiting the turnovers, limiting the free possessions. I mean, this isn't saying anything you don't already know. But you've got to be able to make the most out of your drives and see if your defense can help you out and take the ball away from the other team and give you a few extras. the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line so the Colts now coming out for their opening drive as we get a peek at the number two overall pick from the 2016 draft standing at six foot five Carson Wentz and when you look at him you see that he's got all the tools you want in a quarterback the big frame the quick release strong arm has escape ability the issue sometimes tries to do too much instead of just taking the throws that are available to him and occasionally turnovers get him into trouble. Wentz now on first down. The Dolphins get there this time and they bring him down. Jalen Phillips credit him with a sack and it goes as a loss of six. A lot of talk the other day about them wanting to quiet this home crowd early and often. Very first play of the game, they do just that. You're exactly right about that because that's often a conversation when you go on the road and you travel. Hey, let's take the crowd out of it. What a great way of doing so by putting the quarterback on the deck. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Wentz going to throw. Under pressure, they got him again. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Boy, how about this to start a ball game? That's twice in a row now, Charles, if they get to it. And how often do we talk about offenses that operate off of a script to begin games? Feels like this defense had their script together on this one, and their script said put the quarterback down and do it fast. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. So how's that for an interesting way to start this ball game? <laughs> First drive of the game and you go backwards all the way into your own end zone? Guess it kind of makes you wonder what else we might have in store here in this one. Now 
After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. This is brought in at the 21. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. And for all the collegiate success he had, highest passer efficiency rating by a mile. He's a guy who's had his share of detractors at the professional level, but I do like his poise, I do like his moxie, and I love his accuracy. The Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. A good down to possibly take a shot, and in fact, they'll come up with an empty backfield on second and inches. Going to the air, Tugabailoa. He's going to loft this one deep left sideline. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't get in. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Play action, now it's Tua. That's complete to his running back, Carter. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Well, let's be honest about the whole thing. When you're looking for a reliable set of hands on third down, the first thought is often not fullback. But that's who they turn to there, and he does a nice job of securing the football and picking up the first down. <laughs> On the handoff, it's Gaskin. Xavier Rhodes makes the tackle. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Looking to pass, Tua. The Colts are going to get him. There he goes. DeForest Buckner busting through to get him for a loss of six. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options. And while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Here's Tonga Vailoa to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Call it a pickup of three, and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25 to will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. 
Carson Wentz in the cold offense ready to go back to work. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the the ground now going forward the Indy offense at the line and set to go and of course coming off the safety the last time they had the football I never want that nowhere to go here he lost the football but I believe the Colts were able to fall on this when they were and so possession will remain with Indy points one two and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free they did it there luckily offense hangs on to it yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. First carry now for the former Badger, Jonathan Taylor. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Working from the gun, Wentz. Under pressure, and down he goes. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance. They've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Back deep for Miami, Jalen Waddell. Oh, what a move. 47-yard punt, a return of four. And it'll be Dolphin football. So Miami coming out for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Here's Gaskin, and he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Behind the chain, second and 12. From the gun, it's Tua. He's got Fuller. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 38. Tua sets up to pass it. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. Not much. 
catch there, only a yard. You know, when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Still nine remaining on second down. Here's Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Going for it all. And this one is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Tua setting up shop to throw again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki, and it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Now Tua. Finding Gaskin underneath. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Sanders is good. And that will give us the very rare scoreline of 5 to nothing. So it's our first offensive points of the game so far, and it gives us a very rare scoreline. We don't see this one often, 5 nothing. Yeah, it's been sort of a weird one to this point, hasn't it? But hey, in this league, you take points any way you can get them. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Rodgers on the return. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. To throw, it's Wentz. Incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways call this penalties. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw is Wentz. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And all the way down to the 35. A big play there for Indy. 
I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. Wentz now on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And that'll bring up second down. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. Here's second and ten. Throwing his wins. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 22-yard line. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Naeem Hines, his first carry, and he'll get nothing there. Stopped right at the line as that will wind us down to the end of this first quarter of play. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession as they've got it with a second and ten. It's going to give this to Taylor. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. From the gun, it's Wins. That's into the hands of Pascal. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay inbounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points. Not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Setting the throw on first down is Tua. Going deep here for Parker. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. 
And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Tua going to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. The Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Chungavailoa. And incomplete on the deep ball. I'm looking at this one by defensive eyeglasses on because you remember the old days when a tight end saw a linebacker covering him and thought he had a mismatch? But the way they can run nowadays, not necessarily so. They gave it a shot downfield. That one incomplete. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he'll punt it away for the second time. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Running left, Taylor. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Good, strong run against the 3 4 set. And that 3 4, you've got to have your guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. On second down now. It's Hines. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The Colts on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. to Taylor on first down. And some room to work. A oh, nice move. <laughs> and he is out of bounds inside the 35. 56 yards rushing for him now. He's carried the ball just five times. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Wentz to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now wins. And down he goes. 
They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Emmanuel Agba able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational, CD. That is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. They call it a loss of a yard there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Getting set to go again on offense, here's Devontae Parker now. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers would tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. This is Gaskin on the carry. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Tua. That is incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? The Dolphins on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Looking to pass, Tua. Over the middle, he's got Gasicki, the big 6'5 tight end. And the result here, a pick up of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Second and two. The play fake for Gaskin. Now Tua. Gonna look deep for Wilson. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Albert Wilson, 56 yards. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And as that ball was hanging in the air with the receiver streaking downfield to meet it, here in the stadium, you could just sense the crowd thinking, oh, no. And their worst fears were realized as that one turned into a long touchdown. And that throw, wow, 72 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that makes this a nine-point game.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. It's time for our player spotlight right now as we get a look at Carson Wentz. He's been pretty good when he's had time. The issue is, as we see here, a lot of times he hasn't had the time. And a lot of that in getting past it is attitude. How is he projecting? Is he showing that the teams, the other team is getting to him? Is he showing his guys up front that he's upset, that he's angry? Or is he still encouraging? Because those guys, they've got to find a way to pick it up. And it always happens a little bit better if they feel like their quarterback's on their side. So far, five sacks against him. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Wentz now on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Oh, Zach Pascal, 75 yards. And the cold strike quickly here for six points. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we can at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. Yeah, this is a guy who runs with such balance and control. I mean, he went through that early contact just like he was driving over a speed bump. And he's able to continue his way downfield and wind up in the end zone. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And the lead is down to two. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Tua Tungavailoa in the offense heading back out. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Open receiver here, complete. It's Parker. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. They'll look to throw. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. Three yards the game there, second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. They'll run now with Gaskin. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open. 
for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Let's go, boys. Let's go. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Meanwhile, to his throw, taken in here by Fuller. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Here's Tungabailoa on first and 10. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Three yards the game there, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Two and a throw again. And his throw here is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown on their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. Sanders' kick is good, and that's going to up the lead to 15 to 10. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it will come out to the 25. Carson Wentz, along with his offense, heading back out there for their next possession. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident continue to try and up his game but just let him know hey if i'm around if i'm the one calling signals and throwing the football just follow me we'll get there sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else see if he has that confidence he'll check this one down to taylor and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line the Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Wentz now to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Right 
from just shy of midfield. Wentz. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off Byron Jones. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. Well, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive backs, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. Sanders now to add the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Here's Carson Wentz now with the rest of his offensive unit heading onto the field. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, Let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. 52 is the mic. Watch Mike. Watch Mike. It's been a long day for you. Working from the gun, Wentz. He'll find his man. That's Taylor again. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Miami. And they've had plenty of success throwing the football so far this afternoon as they're on pace to throw for over 300 yards if their form holds. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they weren't quite as successful throwing the ball as their counterparts were, but they still were able to move the ball reasonably well in that first half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They'll start the third quarter here on the ground. Two yards the loss, second and 12. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Tua sets up to pass it. Finding Gaskin underneath. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and they'll be facing a third and 12. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Out of the gun on third down, here's Tua. And that will be incomplete. So no problems moving the ball in the first half, but they'll likely come up empty here on drive one of quarter three. And it was so important for the defense to get that stop because what we witnessed in the first half was them getting run over. And they needed the confidence, and they needed to get off the field so they felt good going forward in this game. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Miami. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. No return, but it goes down as just a punt of 31 yards. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. 66 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. It was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They'll run on first down. Hines, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now they'll throw it. Wentz. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Zach Pascal, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. 
I tell you, when Carson Wentz can really step into one and get that 6-5 frame behind it, he can really launch it. And I'm telling you, nothing will let up a crowd more than a play like that. Here in the stadium, all eyes were on the receiver streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. Yeah, and that throw traveling in even 64 yards in the air. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After you play, ruling on the field. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Now Blankenship on for the PAT. And this is back to a five-point game. A drive there of just four plays, and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Over the middle complete. That's Fuller. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. And here's a handoff out of the gun. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Here's Tua. He's got Fuller. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down. And he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. All right. Two and now on first down. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so.
Hands it off out of the gun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two and a third down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. If they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Another run with Gaskin. And Gaskin, I don't think he got there. No, they're going to mark him short. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Getting a sense of the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on to punt for Miami. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And the Colts getting ready to go. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Carry by Taylor to start the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now left side on the swing pass. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll be a loss of two on the play. And it'll be third and 10. Well, so much for bluffing the defensive line into thinking that they were going to be able to get to the quarterback. Instead, they sniffed out the screen pass and made a really nice play for lost yardage. Now Wentz on third down. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. That's a nice design there. But sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense back out onto the field. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. 
from the 22 to a He'll get this out wide to Gaskin. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? So first and 10 now from the 30. Looking to pass to him. And this will be incomplete. Well, listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head, out of harm's way. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Throwing now is Chugavailoa. And that's incomplete. And now offensively is third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Torn back across his body. Picked up by Carl Willis. Now he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football and they take one of those away. So after the INT, here's Wentz. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. Seven yards to pick up there. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. second down it's Taylor and he'll be brought down losing yardage back at the 40 it'll be a loss of a couple on the play so now third down coming up I like the strategy extra tight ends extra beef they want to run the football but that means they probably want to run it inside if you get strung out on the perimeter you're in peril yeah we saw the result negative yardage So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. The Colts on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and five. Now wins. And Pascal's got it. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Wentz now on first down. Oh, 
trying to improvise. And Wentz going to slow into a stop. He does have the first down. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter. Picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. On the handoff, Taylor, and he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Wentz going to throw. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Jalen Phillips picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Now after the sack, Winston the Colts, they're left looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Doyle. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Now Wentz, gotta have this one. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Dolphins defense is able to hold. Now that's just simply good coaching and excellent technique on that play. You know why? Because wow. everyone wants to rush the passer when they want to throw the football, but you're not always going to get there. So what are you taught to do? When the ball's finally thrown, get your hands up in the passing lanes, and they batted that one away. No, 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 no. side handoff and he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14 give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down a tight game like this such a tough spot for the offense to be in even though they have the lead Charles back up so close to their goal line they got to protect the football and that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well not a lot of misdirection not a lot of counters not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling get it right to the hands of your running back Tell him to take care of the ball and try to move forward. And two are going to slide to a halt, but he will have the first down. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced a ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one. He might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Oh. 
second and 11 now. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. And able to find Gesicki as tight end. And he is going to have the Let's Dolphins go. first Let's down go. as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Second and seven. Now Tua. And over the middle, this is Parker. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 40. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try to loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Here's Tungabailoa on first and 10. They'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. To stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game.
so the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. Sanders' kick is good, and that'll push the lead up to eight. Now from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Rodgers going to return it from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Carson Wentz in the offense. Down by eight. A minute 53 remaining. They need a touchdown and, of course, the two-point conversion as well. This one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Wins to throw. Completes it to Hilton. What a big tackle there defensively. One of the most difficult things for a defender to do, and think about the speed that he brought down. If he gets away, he's likely gone. First down now, but the clock continues to move. To throw his wins. And his throw is incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and let your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now Wentz. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Dolphins get the football in great field position. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts 
as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. And to give this time to the tailback. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Now Tonga by Loa. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. A gutsy decision there going for it on fourth, but they got it, and that likely puts an end to this one. Indeed, it was gutsy because there's so many other options they probably could have exercised in that situation but they bet on themselves and it paid off down to an egos tour and that should just about do it so a victory here for the miami dolphins and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game but when you throw one in the fourth quarter that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch.